Good everyone, welcome to another video we're doing on RAM and how it affects your rendering speed. So if you didn't know we did a video about this a little while ago, but a few of you had some comments to make about our method that it wasn't actually that thorough. So we thought we'd retest everything and we're going to answer some interesting questions like what actually makes a difference when you're rendering in Blender Cycles Engine when it comes to this stuff. First though, a big shout out to Mway for letting us use this computer for all kinds of cool stuff. It's made this video actually possible. So link to their store in the description. So for our setup and method, we use this particular motherboard, which you'll see here on the screen. And it's an Aorus Elite Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. And the reason we did this is because we needed four memory slots with two channels. So it has two slots for channel A and two slots for channel B, which lets us test independently whether channels or amount of RAM make any difference. So we did all these experiments which you can read more about in the article which I'll link to in the description below which we're going to look at during this video and we'll talk now about the results. So the first test we did was in response to some of the comments that we did have on the first video that we didn't actually test upgrading from 8 to 16 gigabytes but instead what we actually saw was the result of going from single to dual channel. So this time we tested with 16 gigabytes in single and then 16 gigabytes in dual channel configurations. And what we found out is Blender just don't care. It don't care. It doesn't make any difference. We ran all of these benchmarks, which you can go and run yourself. These are all from Blender.org. And we found out that, yep, single versus dual channel is not affecting the render time on any of these benchmarks. You may wish to do your own tests and let us know if you get a different result. But from our tests, nah, nothing. Why might this be the case? Well, really, one of the main reasons you have more than one channel for memory is that you may have many cores in your CPU, which are all competing to get access to the memory. You can think of this like lots of people suddenly coming into a bank and having to queue up at the teller. You can make things faster if you have more than one queue and more than one teller in the bank. That way you can process requests from two queues at once and it's actually quicker. However, in ray tracing, it seems we never actually get enough requests to fill up even one queue. Now this may actually start to become a factor if you have a really high core count CPU, maybe like a Threadripper, and a really, really big scene but we've yet to test that. We're testing on a 3950X, which is 32 threads. We'll have to test it. We'd love to test it. I would love to test the Threadripper, but we haven't done that yet. So let's move on to the next one. So the next test we ran was basically around speed. Does the speed of your RAM actually make a difference? And it turns out yes and no. So for all the benchmarks that we ran, we went back and looked at the results and really it was only the benchmark which had the largest amount of data in the scene, which is the Victor benchmark, that actually ran better with higher speeds. All of the rest of the benchmarks didn't care again, so it seems to be related to exactly how much data is in the scene. There could be other factors though because we haven't tested all the combinations available to us. But even if it turns out that render speed does matter, you don't really get much of an improved performance past the RAM speed recommended for the CPU. So if we look at the actual results for the test for Victor that we did, you'll notice that once we get past sort of about 3200 megahertz, um, we're not really going to get much more of an increase in speed. The best speed was pretty much around 3200 megahertz and we did try going one stop higher but again it really didn't make much of a difference. So the final result we want to talk about is what we originally tested in the first video which was upgrading a computer from 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM to see if it made any difference when it came to render times. And the truth is, across most of the benchmarks, it does not. This very closely mimics the results we got from the first test. The only benchmark that actually showed a difference was the Victor benchmark, and that's because its total amount of data which it wants to render with is about 12 gigabytes, give or take. That's more than 8 gigabytes, which means the 8 gigabyte test had the CPU trying to move data out of memory to make room for the scene to fit. And that slowed it down. As you can see from the results, it was about a minute slower, about 55 seconds actually. So in conclusion then, what can we say about RAM and rendering in Blender Cycles Engine? Pretty much that you should make sure you have enough RAM to fit all of your scene. So if you think about the Victor scene, it's about 12 gigabytes. Um, in the 16 gigabyte case, it ran a lot faster. We probably want a little bit more headroom though because you may want to run other applications. You've also got the operating system which is going to take up maybe a few gigabytes itself. So you should think about on average how much data are in your scenes 
and that should give you a guide about how much RAM you actually need in your workstations or in any computers you want to use for render nodes in a render farm. When it comes to speed, recommend going with what the manufacturer recommends because it seems like you may not actually get much speed out of it unless you're an overclocking enthusiast, in which case, yeah, we should probably investigate whether overclocking RAM and CPUs together gives you much of a boost in speed at all because it may be just a huge waste of time. And finally, when it comes to single versus dual channel, well, it seems like you're probably okay with single channel unless you're going to be buying some really powerful multi freaking huge CPUs with lots of cores and threads on them and doing hideously big scenes. But even that is theory at the moment because we have not tested it. So for now, you can probably stick with whatever motherboard has enough RAM for you to get your jobs done. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you thought it was useful, then please give us a thumbs up or a subscribe or you know, click the bell icon thingy if you want to hear from us again when we do other crazy experiments. Some comments, if you think we can make stuff better or if we missed something or made some other mistake, then yeah, we'd love to hear about it because we'd love to get better at this sort of stuff. And I highly recommend if you're in Australia or New Zealand that you go check out our sponsors page. That's M-Wave Australia, link in the description below. They helped us by letting us have this PC. So it's been awesome having their support so we can do stuff like this. Go check out their store. They deliver to Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Go do it. Go do it. See ya.